Now, there are several great Paladin builds in Diablo 2 Resurrected, but some of them take so many high runes, you either have to whip out your credit card in order to get the gear for it, or maybe you're lucky enough to have a couple decades of D2 JSP gold accumulated that you can go ahead and use to get all of these high runes it takes to make these incredibly expensive rune words. But that's not all of them. There's actually three builds that are incredibly good early on and budget-wise, and are actually even great and even better late game with kind of like end game gear that is actually obtainable for the average Joe or Jane, all 1.6% of you, I see you. So that's what we're going over today. The three best Paladin builds that the average person can actually play. They're either great on playthroughs or early on. So I'm gonna go over budget gear options that make these builds actually great and even end game gear options that are actually obtainable for the average person. Now we're taking a look at the original Giga Chat here in Diablo 2. Well, at least for like the last decade at minimum, ever since they added in synergies that made these blessed hammers absolutely amazing. Now behind you, you see this is an end game version, but even budget and even on a playthrough, this ability is so incredibly powerful. It makes this hammered in absolutely spectacular. Now, what is a hammered in actually good for? We'll start off right at the beginning on a playthrough. Now, you're not going strictly level one straight into hammers, obviously. You got to level up a little bit. I believe it's right around 18 is when you get access to the blessed hammers. And generally on a playthrough, if you want it to go super easy, you're going to want to be a hammered in on your playthrough. It's so incredibly powerful from the very first second that you get access to this skill. Now, once you get done with the playthrough or maybe towards the end of the playthrough, what are some good budget options that can make this character even better? Well, a lot like many casters, the spirit sword and the spirit shield are going to be good options along with Pretty much anything that goes for a generic caster. Maybe you find something along the way like a whiz spike or you find yourself a suicide branch. All the stuff that can definitely help you out. Of course, this along the same line super early on and make yourself a stealth just like pretty much any caster in the game. The extra FCR walk run and hit recovery can really help you out. Another great thing to look out for. I know spirit shields definitely on any caster, but for the paladin, you have these actual paladin bases. They can have up to 45 res. I mean, budget, you're probably not going to find one super quick. But maybe you can even find one that's got 10, 20, 30 even on it. And that extra res, man, that survivability is epic. Now, when you're talking endgame for this build, it once again is kind of stereotypical, almost endgame caster gear. We've got the Heart of the Oak. You've got the Spirit Shield over on the other side right there for the shield. The Herald of Zacharum, obviously another great option over there. Up on the top of the lid there, you obviously got the Shaco. And you see this endgame build in the background absolutely slapping down everything. And you see it teleporting around and tele stomping, so you know this character also uses the Enigma. Now, I will warn you before you get Enigma, the character does play a little bit different, a little bit slower. Once you get this crazy endgame gear, though, absolutely nothing will stop you. You can easily clear players 8 difficulty with a fully decked out hammered in. Now, I did say at the very beginning of the video, some other builds take a ton of high runes. This completely decked out endgame one here takes a few. Obviously, you're going to have Call to Arms on Swap. Like I said, Heart of the Oak, Enigma. So you're rocking something along the lines of three to five high runes, depending on how many of the pieces of gear you do actually obtain. Now, what is this build good for? Like I said, you're taking out pretty much anything in the game on player's eight difficulty. That is of the normal monsters or the normal farming areas. Now, this is not an uber farmer. You could take out D-Clone with this probably pretty easily. I personally have not gone ahead and done that, but I'm sure it would be pretty easy, but... As for going after Ubers, you probably could, but it is not the build I would recommend to do that. Maybe we'll talk about one that can a little bit later in the video. So next up, we got the new Young Buck in town, but man, he is probably just as powerful as a Hammered. In my opinion, a little bit different of a skill set as you see those blue bolts raining down, and that is the Fist of the Heavens Paladin. The good thing that this has over hammers is that you can obviously launch them from anywhere on the entire screen, to anywhere else on the entire screen so you don't have to put yourself in any harm's way and actually your kill speed can be increased because you don't have to bother tele stomping you can just stand still and drop bombs from deep now when can you actually start specking into this particular build well if you're in a full party you could go ahead and just go straight into it pretty much by putting your points at level six into a holy bolt yeah you'll have to get carried by the rest of your team to get up to level six which only takes a little bit but i would recommend in most instances go ahead and do the standard holy fire type of build get up to around level 20 25 somewhere along them lines and then go ahead and switch into this particular build now back in the day the holy pulse used to only do damage to undead 
much less useful than now because they do damage to undead and demons. And also, it's important to note that obviously in this particular game, like 80% of all the monsters are actually undead or demons. So you can really farm in an absolute ton of areas. Luckily for anyone who wants to play this build, those are some of the best areas in the entire game. Now, when we're talking budget gear wise on the playthrough or right after you get done with a playthrough, it's going to be exactly literally identical to what I said for the hammered. And so it's going to be the spirit shield and sword. It's going to be the stealth armor, perhaps even throwing on a lore to get a skill and stuff like that. So it's literally the exact same kind of budget caster items you'd use for any type of caster character in D2R. Now, when you're talking end game, yeah, yep, it's pretty much the exact same as a hammer as well. You throw on that Heart of the Oak, you throw on the Enigma, you throw on the Shaco, over you can either have the Herald of Zacharum once again, or the Spirit Shield. Pretty much all that same caster stuff that you're throwing on your Hammerdon. Now, where the biggest difference is, kind of like, we'll say what it's good for. Now, like I said, it's undead and demons only. So, you did see when we were throwing up the Hammerdon, they went out and farmed cows. You are not going to be doing that with a Fist of the Heavens Paladin. Now, it won't deal any damage to those cows because they're actually considered beasts or animals are kind of a nondescript type of monster so you're not gonna be able to do that another place you can't go is out to eldritch and shank because those are beasts once again now what places is it good for well you can definitely rock down in the pits easy peasy right off the bat at kind of low levels obviously it absolutely slaps the chaos sanctuary everything in there is either undead or demons and the chaos sanctuary is amazing for farming another great spot that people love to farm you can head out to trav because all of the council, once again, are all demons. Another great thing, super important to note kind of here, while we wrap up talking about this character, is it's incredibly easy to dual spec. Now, you don't use a ton of points into all this different synergies for Fist of the Heavens. So you end up with a lot more left over, and a very, very popular way to dual spec this is to go Fist of the Heavens, and then also make it kind of a dual smiter. If you have smite skill, it lands every time, so it can kind of make for a... You know, combination farmer and also farming torches and taking out D-Clone to get those Annies as well. I've even heard of versions combining the last two we talked about, Fist of the Heavens Paladin and a Hammerdon. So you can kind of have the best of both worlds and take out, well, literally everything. Now we're into the third and final most used Paladin in Diablo 2. So I kind of already mentioned this particular one because I had to kind of talk about it in the dual specking section of the Fist of the Heavens. But we're talking about the Smiter Baby, and this character is clutch when it comes to farming torches. Now, when you're talking about when are you actually going to go into this particular type of build, this is not really going to be a character that you want to do on the playthrough, and it's not necessarily one that you really are going to want to do to go out and farm gear initially. Initially, Now, what you'll generally do is either go Hammers or go Fist of the Heavens, and then you go out and farm up some gear, or... Maybe you'll have like, you kind of work as a team with a buddy where he goes and farms up some gears and keys, and then you go ahead and farm the torches. So this is a build you're gonna do either right after reset and you're gonna be strictly sticking to farming torches and taking out D-Clone to get Annie's for people. And then when you're using this late game, you can get an incredibly God tier smiter to where you don't even have to drink a single potion. You don't have to worry about nothing. You can get out there and chop down all the Ubers, get your torch in a matter of 30 seconds to a minute. So when we're talking about some of the budget gear pieces early on, actually, some of these items are even used endgame because they just work out best for the build. We're talking about things that you're going to use early on and later, maybe something like Goblin Toast, 25% chance of crushing blow, and crushing blow is absolutely clutch on this particular build. Now, the way Smite works, it lands every single time. It doesn't take into account the attack rating. It doesn't take into account the defense of the monster or anything like that. Just every time you attack with Smite, it lands. So when you use Crushing Blow, it chops off a percentage of the monster's health. So monsters with large health pools, you're going to be chopping that life down way faster than if you're just dealing some certain amount of damage from your character. So that is incredibly important to note. And also, the thing is with Smite, you don't leech. So you need some way to stay alive. And that's important to note as we jump into like the budget options here. So one thing you really want to do super early on, go shop yourself and life tap wand it's essentially like life leech on steroids you just cast it on the monster real quick however long it lasts as long as it's up and you're swinging with the smite you essentially can't die now occasionally mephisto's lightning can deal so much damage he can one shot you when you're super budget but you really leech back so much life you're going to be all right most of the time 
Now there's a budget weapon rune word you can definitely use. It's called black. It has what I believe is 40% chance of crushing blow. And super early on, just getting any crushing blow is going to be spectacular, like I said. Another good budget option. You are going to have to find it or trade for it. It's not that easy to get, I suppose, but it's called the G-Face. This is another one that has a ton of crushing blow on it. And you notice a trend here, stacking that crushing blow. Now, when we slide into the end game gear, now there's a bunch of different options and different variations of the smiter, but I mean, definitely on the shield, a lot of people go with the Herald of Zacharoon or the Haas. You could obviously go with the Shield Exile, which is essentially made specifically for the Paladin Smiter. It's absolutely amazing. It actually has a high percent chance of life tap on it, which can obviously keep you alive, like I said, forever. And if you want another form of that life tap, there's gloves called Dracul's Grasp, or people just refer to them as Drax, also have a chance to cast life tap on them. Now, when we talk about the weapon, there's really only one choice for any melee character in the game. Probably going with a Grief. Or you can go ahead and slap on a Last Wish as well. I've heard that one used also. And then when we're talking about Armor, Fortitude, or Enigma, up at the Amulet, High Lord's Wrath, usually the go-to. Now, what is this used for? I did mention early on, you're not really going to want to farm for this. Like, you're not going to want to go ahead and farm Andy. You're not going to want to go ahead and farm Mephisto to try to find better gear. This is used for one specific thing, but everybody, everybody wants to get Annie's and Torches at the beginning of a ladder. So that's why there are so many of these Uber Smiters, is literally what they call them, out there on Ladder Reset. 